We're continuing the bar basic series today on Chaser with an episode that's all about strainers. How to use them, what to look for in a quality tool, and how to improve a tool that maybe isn't really up to snuff. I need to take a moment though just to say that this special series we're doing on bar basics is presented by Article. Article produces mid-century modern style furniture for an affordable cost by cutting out showrooms and shipping direct to you. And they ship almost everything for $49. A few things actually they ship for less. It's a 30-day money-back guarantee, but I don't think you'll be making use of it. I love everything I got from them. Anyway, uh, if you're interested in anything you see on the show, furniture-wise, check out the link in the show description. Be a favor to me. Thank you, guys. Anyway, let's talk about strainers. And there's basically three styles of strainers. There's a julep strainer, a hawthorn strainer, and a tea strainer, also called a double strainer. So the julep strainer is this guy. It's basically a big spoon that's full of holes. And it is the formally correct way to strain a stirred drink. And why is that? Well, a stirred drink shouldn't have small bits of ice floating in it. And that is really what the strainer's job is. The strainer's job, this Hawthorne strainer or julep strainer, is to separate the ice from the drink. What to look for in one? Well, I look for a metal that doesn't tarnish, so I prefer stainless steel to silver, although silver or gold or whatever is going to look very nice. A lot of the gold or copper ones are, are plated and plated somewhat thinly, I find, and then they wear and show their under, underlying metal anyway. In a perfect, perfect, perfect world, everything would be seamless, so this would not actually be this way. It would be just one piece. That way there's you know no little creases that have to be cleaned out from underneath. Um, that said, this is a very nice, uh, very nice julep strainer. I've had it for a number of years. It's taken a great deal of abuse getting kicked around in my bag um, and I have no need for another one or to replace it. Now one of the things about a stirred drink is that you actually really want it to be pretty packed in ice because it's got to have enough body to hold, help you hold your spoon against the glass wall. So when you're using this uh, bar spoon the idea is that the bowl of the spoon is open to the inside of the glass and it rotates in such a way that it's like a, boy, that's a nerdy thing to say. It rotates in a way that a tidally locked planet might rota rotate around a star, um, so that the bowl is always open to the center of the glass. So you just want to stir so that you are rotating around and always open to the center of the glass. I have seen descriptions of how to use this where it's like, you know, you claw it and you push forward and pull back and push forward and pull back. And maybe that's, I don't think that's exactly what I'm doing. I think. I'm not very good at either, I guess. But all right, yeah, so I, I, I think it's something you just kind of get a feel for. The spiral definitely helps a lot with your grip and making it work. Having it balanced properly helps a lot. Now, you can see we've melted a lot of ice in there. The spoon will now have a tendency, because there's some play in it, at lower speeds to kind of want to move towards the center. And that is not what we, you know, you don't want to do that. And you get a feel for that pretty quickly, I think. I don't think that that's something that's going to take you a lot of practice to, to get pretty handy at. Now, I've had this, people ask me, which way do you put the spoon? Should I put my spoon on here so that it's bowl forward or uh, bowl in? The answer is, <laughs> I don't know. I never really gave it much thought. I, the first person who I saw do this did it with the bowl pointing into the glass like this and I never questioned it. Someone asked me in a comment once a while back, why do you do it that way? And I said, gee, I don't know. But then I played around with it and I was like, you know, it kind of locks this way. Like once I have this spot found, I'm pushing down here and it doesn't want to move. Um, whereas this way, it does kind of have a tendency to want to release. I do find that they're easier to lock in that way rather than uh, the reverse. Uh, whatever it is, you kind of want to make sure that you have a good grip, right? You don't want to have to fight it and you don't want to look silly with it slipping all over the place. Um, and anyway, you should be able to hold it just like that with a finger on the spoon. And then we can pour. And since we've only stirred this and we didn't shake it, we have no difficulty getting everything out and not a single piece of ice because there's no free-floating bits of ice. And that is a stirred glass of water. Oh, it's so cold, it's lovely. The next kind of strainer is a Hawthorne strainer. And now this is the Hawthorne strainer I use almost all the time, and I certainly have seen me using it on the show a lot. Uh, Hawthorne strainer is obviously different because it has a huge spring on it. The function of that spring is to filter ice chips. Um, it also has the added benefit of making it kind of universal, right? It should fit 
a number of vessels. Um, but basically, the, the reason you need this is when you're shaking a drink, you're going to end up with slush and like fractured ice, and you want to filter that out. Uh, this is the job for that. It's a pet peeve of mine, and I'm going to talk about this right now, that I see that almost every cocktail in a fancier bar is double strained. And really, double straining, when he's talking about now our tea strainer, this is for removing like herbs, like mint or whatever you've muddled into your drink. Uh, because this won't do that job. When there's little bits of vegetation, you need something like this to remove it. If your Hawthorne strainer is a good one and you are using it properly, I don't think you should need to double strain a drink that doesn't have muddled vegetation in it. And what makes a good Hawthorne strainer good is the tightness of this coil. You'll see that the distance between coils here is very, very narrow. Okay, um, there's a couple of other features that I'm going to get to and explain what I like about this one. So I have bought, for demonstration purposes, the cheapest Hawthorne strainer I could find on Amazon, and it is absolute garbage. It is made from a single stamped piece of metal, and the edges are actually so sharp still that I'm afraid I'm going to cut myself on it. And you can see it's got a big, loose coil on its spring. Cheap. Um, this is like $14 or $20, I forget what I paid for it. This was like 3 bucks. If you find yourself in a position where you can only, uh, you're trying to spend as little money as humanly possible, I can respect that. I would recommend you buy two of these and I'll show you why, because you can double spring these, um, which is what I did for a number of years actually, um, and you will get a tighter coil on your strainer. And basically what I did was I would take the ends of the two springs and kind of weave them together and then kind of work this guy all the way up one side Oh, yeah, it's not a perfect science, you know. There. Now, after a little bit of work, we have managed to double spring this, and it's improved. The coil is much tighter on that, but it's still nowhere near as tight as I would prefer it to be. But that's definitely one way to, uh, uh, to, to use some bargain basement stuff and do better than that. I, I should say, this is not expensive at all. I mean, it's, it's a really quality tool, and it's going to last you forever, as far as I can tell. So, how do we use it? I want to point out some of the parts of the Hawthorne strainer. You know, with tiki drinks, a lot of times we're going to open pour. That's an open pour, right? There's no strainer. Now, this is an open gate, and that's a closed gate, and there's a difference. If we have a strainer like this, we're, we're doing good filtering here, extreme filtering here. We're going to, you can control how fast it flows, and if you're in a high volume situation and you know you can get away with it, maybe you just do an open gate. Maybe, though, for a drink like this, we want a closed gate. And you can see, pouring closed gate, there is none of that terrible ice floating on this drink. So using a, um, a, a Hawthorne strainer properly, I don't understand the necessity to double strain everything. Now, let's say we did that again. Let's try this with our less ideal strainer. Now already, you're looking at this and you're like, well, the worst you know you can still kind of open and close a gate there let's see Ooh. ah now we have succeeded in putting some ice chips into this water this would be a bad martini it shouldn't have been shaken but now i know something i hate this this thing sucks it actually uh this button is too high on it right so it doesn't actually, uh, it works against you. It doesn't help you. Anyway. <sighs> Disasters. Piece of junk. All right. There is some ice floating in this drink, so no bueno. But, I mean, it did do a reasonably good job being double sprung. I bet if it was single sprung, we would have a different result. At any rate, you want to look for a Hawthorne strainer that allows you to open and close the gate. Um, I know for some reason the OXO, is like super popular. I, I have not owned one, but I look at the design and I think there's no way that, that thing can work properly. It just doesn't seem... I mean, OXO makes great stuff usually, but I, I don't see the, uh, the, the how that one works. All right, that's it for this episode of Chaser's Bar Basics, all about strainers. I know I didn't get into double straining. It's because I'm going to cover that in another episode when we talk more about muddling. It's kind of like a package deal. Those things go together. If you like the show, I hope you will subscribe. Uh, Tell your friends, tell people. If you like any of the tools or equipment that I use on the show, you want to pick it up for yourself, you can check that out at thisishowtodrink.com slash gear. 
Um, costs you nothing extra to shop there, and I get a little piece of it, so it helps me make this show. Um, I do have a Patreon now. It would be very nice of you to take a look. Uh, there's some exclusive stuff there just for patrons. I tweet at How to Drink. I'm on Instagram at How to Drink. And uh, that's it, guys. I'll see you on Friday with another cocktail at How to Drink. See you then. Bye.